Seeing is an elemental act in which there is no distinction between me and the mountain, only empty consciousness mirroring the mountain's form. That's it. I've been translating classical Chinese poetry for many years, and slowly over those years I've come to realize that in translation I've stumbled upon a way to think outside the limitations not just of the mainstream Western intellectual tradition, but also of my own identity, a way to speak in the voice of ancient China's sage masters, and for them to speak in mine. For a variety of reasons that are explained in the book, those ancient sage masters saw the deep structure of things most clearly when in the presence of mountain landscapes. Hence, for instance, the preeminence of mountain landscape in the painting tradition. It therefore seemed that tracing the physical and mental contours of mountain walks would be the best way to work through their insights, not as academic abstraction, but at the level of actual experience though I am uneasy with any portrayal of myself as a master of sagely wisdom. And so, as autumn made its fitful way toward winter, days sometimes cold and sometimes warm, weather sometimes rain and sometimes snow, sky sometimes overcast and sometimes bottomless blue, I took a series of walks up a nearby peak here in Vermont called Hunger Mountain, following a trail I've taken often over my years translating the ancient. Nothing much happens on these autumn walks, which makes them the perfect occasions to explore consciousness and landscape in and of themselves, as well as a dynamic interplay between them. To walk through a landscape is to walk through a culture, for it is culture that determines both what we are and what a landscape is for us. Each of the book's chapters reflects my attempt to understand one of those walks on Hunger Mountain as the ancients might have understood it, to think through it in their voice, but also to let them think through it in mine, with whatever new possibilities that might open.